A Lotka Volterra model is two differential equations that relate predator and the prey. So I'm going to have uh, a couple differential equations that describe these populations between one predator and prey and their concentration. So how many of the predators, how many of the prey. So we're going to start off with just a simple model here. We're going to say that x0, that one is going to be our prey and our x1 that is going to be our predator all right and if we write the differential equation for these the change in time of our prey is going to be equal to x0 so without any predator you would have exponential growth assuming that you had no limitations in terms of food or space for these prey but we're going to have some of the predators that are going to consume the prey we're going to do this with this additional term, x0 times x1. So if you have more predators, you're going to have a faster decrease in the population. Now we also have another differential equation, and this is going to be for our predator population. So that one is also going to be equal to x1, but we know that, um, well actually I'm going to put a negative x1 there. Okay, so we know that as there are more predators, then the predators are going to be able, have to compete with each other. So if there are more, that population is going to decrease. But you have a corresponding increase from a larger prey population. So let's go ahead and add just two additional terms here. And these are going to be from a, a third entity here. And this is going to be uh, humans okay in this case a uh, fisherman that is going to uh, be able to catch some of the predators and prey so we're going to add this third term here and this one is going to be minus c0 and we're going to do x0 times w now, this W is going to be equal to zero, and that is not fishing, okay, or is equal to one, and that is fishing. And that could be a fleet of fishermen, it could be boats, other things. You basically have that decision whether you fish or not, and how that's going to influence the population. And then we're going to have another term here, and that's going to consume some of the predators as well. So sometimes you catch some of the predators. And we're going to make this number right here 0 0.4 and this number 0 0.2. All right, so with that, we're going to try to equilibrate, okay? Try to make the predator and prey concentrations equal, equal to one, so that there's a sustainable population. So we're going to try to fish in a way that's going to help this balance between the two. Instead of sending them into these cycles where there's overpopulation and then a mass die off, we're gonna to try to equilibrate the, comp, uh, the two different concentrations of predator and prey so that they achieve a balance. All right, so this is what a lot of wildlife management does. There are also uh, different strategies in business and others where there's uh, consumers and suppliers and the concentration of each, so you don't oversupply or undersupply. Okay, so a lot of things are encapsulated by this little problem, but the, the challenge here, one of the challenges is that this can only be zero or one. And so we're gonna make this a mixed integer N optimal control problem, okay? And we're gonna convert that into a mixed integer nonlinear programming problem. And then we're gonna solve it with optimization. So let's go ahead and do this one first. We're gonna uh, just set this up with an objective that we're gonna try to make these equal to one. So that's gonna be our objective. And we're going to define a, just a final objective here. This is going to be x2 is going to be equal to the integral from 0 to time final. We're going to say that's 12 years for this case. And we're going to say x0 minus 1 squared plus x1 minus 1 squared. And we're going to try to make the, we're going to try to um, minimize Okay, 
um, how much this is not equal. So if it's equal to one, that x2 is gonna be zero. But if it's not equal to one, that x2 is gonna grow. So we're gonna try to minimize x2 at the end of 12 years by changing uh, and solving for x and then also our variable w. So there's our objective right there. And you can calculate that objective with that integral. All right, so let's go ahead and set this up and solve it with Python. There are also some MATLAB files that are available as well if you'd like to solve it in MATLAB. Okay, so I'm going to just go through this uh, kind of fast. Um, so we're going to first of all import NumPy as MP, import matplotlib as PLT, and then we're going to import Gecko. If you don't have Gecko, just pip install Gecko. We're going to do uh, m equals gecko is going to create our model remote faults we're going to solve it locally and then we're going to set up the time points so we want to be able to set up it from 0 to 12 i'm going to just insert a point zero 0.01 just at the very beginning i'll do that with an np insert you know my lin space from 0 to 12. i'm going to set up some solver options in this case i'll use the mixed integer nonlinear programming solver called apopt and there's additional documentation online for some of these options. Sometimes with these mixed integer nonlinear programming problems, you need to adjust some of these options to be able to terminate with an acceptable tolerance. So you don't have to explore all of these different options. Zero or one for 121 time points, that leads to a lot of different options. And so we're gonna use a branch and bound method here. And we're gonna set some tolerances and branch method and this just kind of comes from experience with these hyper parameters and how you set them to achieve an efficient, an efficient solution. All right, so here we have the gap tolerance. That's probably the most important one, 0 0.001. That's when we say we've terminated and we've found a successful solution. There are two C0 and C1 values. Okay, and I'll just put this over to the side just as we go through this. Okay, so I'm gonna set up my last value, my x1 and x, uh, x0, x1 with the initial conditions, 0 0.5 and 0 0.7, x2, that's my initial uh, objective function, and that's zero. Then I set up my w, that can be an integer value between zero and one. I'm gonna minimize x2 at the very last time point. Set up my two equations with my fishing in there for the prey and then also for the predator. So you can see when we fish, we preferentially capture some of the prey versus the predators. 0.4 for the prey, 0.2 for the predators. And then I'm going to set up my integral. All right, and uh, that's just going to be the deviation from 1 squared. And then I'm going to set I mode equal to 6. That's dynamic optimization. Nodes equals 3. And then I'll set options for my solver. That's going to be equal to 1. And then my MV type is 0. That's a zero order hold and then create a figure. Okay, so this one is just going to visualize a solution after I solve it. So let me go ahead and just solve it just while this is finishing. Okay, so I'll go ahead and just edit this with IDLE, and I'll go ahead and just run this while it's completing some of the plotting there. Okay, so you can see just the plots. It's gonna plot the different values, uh, just make you know, uh, some legends and labels. And you can see it's solving right now. If you want to be able to see the iteration summary, just set remote equals uh, true. And when you solve it on the public server, it'll give back uh, an immediate, um, it'll show you the iterations that it's going through. Okay, so that's it for this one. It's gonna come up with a plot that we'll see here in just a second with uh, some of the values. Now, one of the things that we'll see in this is um, when we solve it, when we solve this problem, we're going to see some chatter in the fishing. Um, so it's going to turn it on or off just to try to get it right to that uh, specific result. Okay, so I'm going to close this one and we'll just let this finish solving. And it's going to return this plot right here. So it's going through all the mixed integer. Uh, solutions for us and it's trying to figure out you know when to turn on when to start fishing and when to turn off the fishing 
And just as all of those combinations, they can take a little while to solve. Um, one of the things that we also see from this, if you were a fisherman and you were to told to go out in uh, this frequency right here, as you can see the red line turning on and off uh, very rapidly, that's a lot of different fishing trips just to be able to try to get the prey back down to that value of one. Now, that might be a problem, especially if you're paying somebody to do that. It might increase the cost of deployment and then um, you know, coming back in. Also, for actuators, if you think about valves or furnaces or other things like that, it's going to wear out the actuator. Okay, wear out the person or wear out the equipment if you're always turning on or off very rapidly. So it, you can also see that it takes a while to find this solution. Um, you know, it's working to find it. You can see it finally came up with uh, the solution right here. And we can see, you know, just this uh, red line uh, and the deployment. It does, you know, get these to a value of one. And then you can see after about time 5.8 or so, uh, you don't need to fish anymore. You have these two populations in equilibrium and they stay in equilibrium after that point. So that's a nice solution there. But you might say, I'm really not comfortable with uh, sending the fishermen out that many times and back again. So let's see what we can do. Something that we call dead band control. So I'm going to just... Um, Okay, so if we can come up with a solution that's similar to this and have somewhat of a dead band where we want to stay within this region, but we want to try to, you know, as long as we're within that region, we really don't care um, what happens. Okay, so this is just our region that's going to be plus or minus 0 0.05. So that's our dead band for this problem. So let's go ahead and set this up with gecko and this is very common in model predictive control there are two ways to avoid some of the chatter in the manipulated variable and one way is called uh, move suppression okay so move suppression is to penalize you put a penalty on moving this value if you move it up or down then you're going to add that to your objective function and try to minimize the movement. The other way to do this move suppression is just to say, you know, what range am I comfortable with here and set that up as a dead band. So as, long as, I'm, as I'm within that dead band, I don't make movements on my manipulated variable. So let's do this for the next case. Okay, I'm going to go a bit faster on this one and just type it out here or at least show uh, the model. Same thing here, but when I get to X0 and X1, you're gonna see some differences there. Also, I'm not defining my objective X2 anymore. I'm just letting Gecko define these objectives for me, where I set those up as controlled variables with a set point low and a set point high. And then I turn their status on. So you can see this region right here, I've defined my new objective, where I've said, I wanna stay within this region right here. And you can see the initial values are still set. And uh, so let's see how this one solves. All right, so I had my other one. Let's just edit this one and run it. A lot of times you'll see that these solve even just a little bit faster um, because you're, as long as you stay within that dead band, it doesn't need to make a lot of movement. Um, you're going to see the iterations here and the gap uh, with the time for each iteration. And this one is going to complete just a bit faster here. Okay, so here we go. We had seven iterations. And you can see it avoided the chatter. We only had to send the fishermen out once. So at the right time, uh, about a little, about 2.7 or so, and then fish until about 4.2. And then you can see the predator and prey stay within that region the whole time. So we don't need to send the fishermen out again. We didn't need to redeploy them for small amounts of time. 
Okay, so that's it for this mixed integer optimal control problem. It's a classical problem, um, but it gives some illustrative, uh, gives some very illustrative points here about how to avoid chatter, how to model these systems, and also how to set up these discrete variables in these optimal control or model predictive control applications.